Okay. Hey, I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack him a god, it's time for the only news that matters. And Sebastian Bach said he threatened to quit Skid Row after he and his bandmates signed away the publishing rights to John Bon Jovi when Skid Row was first starting out. Despite the fact that the 1989 debut from uh, Skid Row went five times platinum and produced several hit singles, including 18 and Life, I Remember You, and Youth Gone Wild, and Peace of Me is an awesome song. Uh, there was lots of bitterness surrounding the success, largely due to the fact that in return from the helping hands of Bon Jovi, Skid Row reportedly had to enter a publishing deal with the Bon Jovi's uh, frontman, newly established underground music company, in which he called his he called his company Underground Music Company. <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, in which uh, they waived their rights to publishing royalties. All money was paid to John Bon Jovi and Richie ba Sambora. After a public dispute, Sambora gave his share of the money back to Skid Row. Bach reflected on the dispute with Bon Jovi during an appearance on the recent episode of The Wild Ride with Steve-O podcast. He said, uh, here's an honest to God truth that is true that we signed a publishing deal with John Bon Jovi in order for us to sign it. He would take us out on tour and we were just a bunch of nobody. So let's go on tour in arenas. I mean, that doesn't happen every day. And all I can say about it is that there was so many bands at the time. And there were so many bands that, and the ones that made it were very few uh, in between. Making it like a unicorn. Uh, but here's what we did. I quit the fucking band. When I understood what we signed, I said, I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this again. So we had a big meeting with the lawyers, who now Jay-Z's right-hand business guy, uh, he was our lawyer then. And I said, I'm quitting unless we're doing the whole thing with Bon Jovi, and I get 25% of everything in the band. And there's five guys in the band. So that's, you know, that was kind of ballsy. Yeah, there's five guys in the band, you're going 25%? All right, anyway, but uh, okay. So we redid that. We go out on that. And then our next record debuted at number one. So back in uh, 2012, Bach said that he was friends with John Bon Jovi again after he didn't talk to Bon Jovi's frontman for many years following the, the dispute over money. And speaking to Art Science TV, Bach said Bon Jovi took us on our very first tour and we signed some papers with him that he got a cut, a cut of it. Uh, we made it big and he would get compensated for helping us out. Nobody expected us to get a, a bit as big as we got. Nobody thought that we would become a big band. That happened at the time in the music industry. And John was like, well, take you on tour, but you guys make it big, then I get a cut of it. So I was bitter about that for a while, but then I realized that we probably wouldn't have made it as big or maybe at all if he didn't take us. And uh, I actually had dinner with John a couple of years ago. We were staying at uh, this place in London, me and Axel, uh, and we were sitting there and the waitress said, hey, guess who's on the other corner? Uh, and I'm like, who? And she said, Bon Jovi. And I said, get the fuck out of here. You know, he was in the corner and I didn't know what to do because we had words. Uh, most of them were mine. So I go, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going over there and say hi to him because we used to be great, great friends. 
I had Christmas dinner at his house and stuff. So I stood up and walked over to John and John was looking at me going, are you going to be a dick or are you going to be nice? And, uh, you know, I was like, what are you going to do? You know, uh, what are you going to say? And I was like, hey, man, how's it going? And he was like, hey, man. And we stood up and we hugged. And then uh, he came up to me and Axel's table and we drank about 15 bottles of red wine and had a great time. And he gave me his phone number and I've been texting him a couple of times here and there. He's a good guy. We're friends again. All right. So there you go. Uh, he almost quit the band if he didn't get 25% from a band that had five members. And may I add, and check out this really cool interview Rachel Bolin did with the Great Decibel Geek Podcast. The Decibel Geek Podcast is a must listen to there. I'm a huge fan of Chris and Aaron. You know, they're buddies of mine and, and they're, you know, both of them. You know, God love them. You know, they, they both love Vinnie Vincent's invasion. You know, like, come on. Hey, you know, come on. Feel sorry for them for that alone. But anyway, they're big Vinnie Vincent fans. They've been talking good about Vinnie while Vinnie was in hiding. So then when Vinnie finally came out, you know, they met him in, in uh, Atlanta. He was cool with them. And then Vinnie, Vinnie even came on their show. I know this is quick. I'll get back to Skid Row. Vinnie went on their show. And everything was cool. And then they asked him, hey, would you take part in the Rockin' Pod? Nashville said, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And he didn't charge money. Or nothing. And then, you know, when it was getting very close to uh, the date, he was like, he he was giving all these demands and stuff. And they were like, oh, screw you. And then Vinny went online and started bashing them. And that's what started my big, you know, uh, bashing Vinny stuff on my channel. Because Chris and Aaron are good people awesome people that treat us like gold when we go to Nashville and uh, by Vinny attacking them. Hey, man, I can attack Vinny. And it got millions of views, so right on. Anyway, going back to Sebastian Bach. Rachel Bolin was on the Decibel Geek podcast with Michael Wagner, and they were discussing the first Skid Row album. Now, this is the first album where Sebastian Bach, you know, wanted all the rights. Sebastian Bach only had one writing credit on that album, on the song Messing With Me. And Rachel said all he did on that song was come up with the word Kalamazoo. That's it. In the lyrics, the word Kalamazoo got him a writing credit on the whole song. And it wasn't 18 in Life or I Remember You or You've Gone Wild. It wasn't a big hit. So, uh, you know, but anyway... I guess he was fighting to get that little peanut he got on that first album, which is pretty wild if you think about it. But yeah, it's crazy. I mean, if anybody's going to be fighting, it's Rachel and Snake, who really wrote the whole first album and wrote a majority of the Skid Row stuff there. Where I will say, I do like, you know, the three Sebastian Box so long, especially the first one, Angel Down. But I don't think it's as strong as Slave to the Grind or subhuman race. I think the songwriting team of uh, Rachel and Snake, you know, is awesome. Made those, made those songs awesome. But Sebastian Bach's voice is what sold it. So he deserves a lot of credit for that first album. But when it comes to writing, you know, publishing deals and shit like that, he ain't seeing that 18 in life, uh, I remember you money. Now, you see in uh, Kalamazoo money, you know, so it's a uh, pretty interesting. Anyway, he only made three albums with Skid Row and I'm going to rank them now. All right. At number three, I'm not a big fan of the first album. I like Peace of Me. I think that song kicks ass and Tornado is pretty cool, too, at the end. But I'm not a big fan of that album. You know, yeah, Big Guns is OK, too. But anyway. Um, second, Subhuman Race. You know, for the longest time, I said Subhuman Race was their best. But like, you know, maybe three, four years ago, I was like, nah, man, you know what? Slave to the Grind's number one. But Subhuman Race is kick-ass. I love it. Very influenced by Pantera. And, you know, my favorite Skid Row song, you know, overall is, uh, Eileen. So, yeah, great. Number one, of course, 
Slave to the Grind, it rules. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching The Only News That Matters. Leave your comments below. What do you think of this whole Sebastian Bach wanting, you know, Kalamazoo money? Leave it in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And ring that little notification bell. I sure would appreciate that. And like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath. And smack him a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>